Yeah, welcome to an American Methods. And we are still now in our section on computer arithmetic. And uh, recall that we had this little experiment here. And we concluded that the order in which we perform summation matters. So I like to talk a little bit about summation. Yeah? And why do I like to talk about summation? Yeah, because summation is very important to us in other numerical methods. For example, in the Monte Carlo method, which will be our next chapter, we are averaging random variables. So we are calculating the average, the expectation of a discrete random variable. And this means that I have to sum all the values of this random variable, then divide by the number of elements. Yeah, And a, a part of this Monte Carlo method is that it converges as you increase the number of samples, which means that you will, in this method, likely calculate a sum of a huge amount of values, a huge sum. And maybe you think, okay, I just have this problem one plus epsilon equals one, but epsilon is a small number and maybe I can forget about this, yeah? I mean, what's the error? The error is just epsilon. The relative error is still epsilon. But if you add a lot of small numbers, the sum is getting larger and larger. So if you look at here a classical summation algorithm, you know, which we have here, you initialize your sum to zero, and then you calculate the new sum is the previous sum plus the value. Yeah. So the sum now takes the role of the one and the value of the epsilon. The sum is already becoming bigger and bigger, and still you are adding small numbers. So you see that actually in the summation, there is already this problem contained. Yeah? If we calculate large sums. Maybe I try to do this as an exercise. So let's create a new uh, experiment, a new class. So let's call that summation experiment. And the idea of this exercise is not only to um, say, show you the problem again and again. The idea is now also that I will present you an algorithm that solves the problem, that performs a robust uh, summation, yeah, that performs an error correction. Yeah, maybe uh, I do a first experiment where we calculate a large sum, but always sum the same value. Maybe I would like to sum small values, say 0.1. So this is now my value. And this value occurs very often. Let's say 10 million times, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or maybe for the beginning, let's start only with five. Uh, let's initialize some array that contains these numbers. Yeah? So I can initialize an array. So this array is now called realizations. Okay, why is it called realizations? If you go back here, my motivation came from Monte Carlo. Yeah? So you can think of the values that you are adding. They are realizations of a random variable. Yeah? But this guy is just the the value, the ice value, yeah, which you would like to to add. Yeah? So I would like to calculate the sum over these xi's. So it's not so important that I name this uh, realization. So this should be a double array, an, an array of floating point numbers. So and how many numbers do we have? We have number of values, we have five, and this is an integer. In this small example, um, I would like to have the array filled with always the same value. Yeah? So let's have this filled with always the same value. So this is now an array that always contains the value 
0 0.1. So now calculate the sum and calculate this maybe in the classical way. Yeah, so let's use this array here. And to, for illustration, if you think of Monte Carlo, I could also calculate the average. So this would be the sum divided by the number of values. This is now my expectation. So let's maybe print this out. Uh, so this is classical summation. Let's print this. I have not yet implemented this method, so let's create it here. And I just use the algorithm that we have here on on this the slide. Yeah. So initialize the sum to zero. Then run a loop over all indices, say from zero to the last one, which is realization length minus one. Yeah. So i is smaller than realization length. I plus plus. And the new sum is the previous sum plus the element, the i's element of my array. So this is how you would calculate the sum of all these elements in this array. And fixing typos, let's run this program. Okay. Um, summing all the values 0 0.1 gives some sum, yeah, here is 0 0.5, divided by the number of values gives me, again, the 0 0.1. Of course, I would always expect the 0 0.1. Uh, let's increase now the number of values yeah, to 10. Okay, you see already 10, an error is occurring, and let's use 10 million now. And you see the error is accumulating yeah, and becoming larger and larger. Yeah? The program runs quite fast, yeah, so it, it's not a big problem for him to sum up 10 million numbers, but we will get problems in the numerical error. So this was our little exercise in an algorithm that improves this situation is the Kahan summation algorithm, and it calculates the sum of numbers such that the error is within certain limits, O of one. So in the sense that the error is not increasing with the N. He is not accumulating an error. So this means to some extent, the error is still in the epsilon range. Yeah? So it's not exact rounding. It's a little bit more to epsilon, I believe. Yeah, but the error is not accumulating. So here, as a remark, this means not accumulating with n. Yeah? So, so the classical one has something which is O of n, uh, O of n times epsilon. You always accumulate an epsilon. So how does this algorithm work? So here is the algorithm, and maybe we go through this step by step. First, note that it's very similar to what we do in the classical algorithm. So we initialize the sum to zero. We also take the value is the i's value. And then we also calculate that the new sum is the previous sum plus the value. If you have done this, you update your sum to the new sum. So these lines that you see here are actually exactly the same as in the classical algorithm. Yeah? So what we did. But now we do something special. We also keep track of the error. So I initialize here a running error compensation. And yeah, what is this error? So this error is now defined as the difference of the new sum and the sum. So actually, if new sum is sum plus value, this guy is expected to be value. 
Yeah. So this is what I would have there if value would have been added to this. And then I subtract value. Yeah, so what is the error? The error is something that is in the sum that should not be there. Yeah? So if the error is positive, if the sum has been too large, I have added too much. If the error is negative, the sum is too small, something is missing. So for example, think of the case with the one plus epsilon. If sum is already one, value is epsilon, one plus epsilon is still rounded to one. So new sum, one, minus sum, one is zero, but value is epsilon, so the error is minus epsilon. So the epsilon is uh, missing. Yeah? So error is something that is in the sum that should not be there. Minus epsilon is in the sum that should not be there. If the error is something that is in the sum that should not be there, I can just take this and correct it in the next iteration. Yeah? But my correction in the next iteration is that I subtract this thing that is there and should not be there, so my error. I subtract it, but I subtract it from the value and then put this into the sum. Because I think of values being small numbers, the error being small numbers, so I do a difference of small numbers. Now, this is a very reasonable algorithm. This looks like a nice error correction. Let's implement this and have a look what is happening. So I maybe create now the sum of values using Kahan summation. Okay. Maybe I also calculate here the average and print this average. So this is now average using the Kahan summation. So, and let me implement this algorithm, which we had, had there. Okay, maybe I can just copy this. So we start off the classical one and we modify this exactly in this way. So I have my running error. So then my value that I sum, this value is realizations here. Huh? So I sum realizations. So this is my my value. But now from this, I subtract the previous error. So I subtract the element that was in the sum that should not have been there. So we are here, values is realizations minus error. So now calculate the sum, but keep track of the previous sum. So in, in introduce a new variable. So my new sum is the sum plus this value, so I still know what the old sum is. Okay, so we are here. And from this, I can now calculate the error as the comparison of, so not initialize the variable, so it's a running error, of the new sum minus the sum minus the value. Okay. So, and then I need to update. So I just have introduced the new sum to have this formula to keep track of the previous sum. So I can update the sum. No? So that should be my current summation. So let's run this guy. And you see, I get the correct average. Yeah, the average should be uh, stable, the error is not accumulating. To illustrate you what's going on, there is maybe another example which is much nicer. Yeah, Let's calculate, let's think of the following example. The value that we add is always our epsilon. Yeah? So this here is our epsilon. Okay. But the first value in our array is one. Okay, because this is an evil case. Yeah, I have one plus epsilon, epsilon, epsilon. So, and maybe um, 
I just implement not the average, I just print you the sum, yeah? So maybe I just print you the sum here. We can drop this little line with the average. So let's look at this experiment. Uh, sorry. Uh, what's wrong? <laughs> sorry. I I not go to the code and see, don't see, because actually this should be just one. Yeah, it's one plus epsilon plus epsilon plus epsilon. This should be just one. This is the this is this one is correct, but the other one that should be wrong. And it's not wrong. And so what did I do wrong? Maybe we just debug it. Debug. Uh, sum is initialized to zero, one. Ah, okay, it's not my epsilon. No, I have the error. Mm. Well, maybe that was a nice, nice little mistake, right? Very good one, actually. So, okay, what we see here is actually uh, the two give the same result, because this guy is not the epsilon, this is actually two epsilon. Yeah? And this is the thing that he can add. Let's now use the epsilon, which is one half, the ULP of one. And you see my classical sum is giving me one, which is just the first element and all the other summations are missing. And my Kahan su summation is giving me the true sum, yeah? So this is actually the sum of all these uh, little epsilons. So maybe conclude the session with this overview here. So here you have a nice example what is happening with the Kahan summation for this case that I just presented. So the initial one is one, and then you always add epsilon. So the thing is that in the initial step, the new sum is one, this is my initial value. Yeah. Then I do a one plus epsilon, so my new sum is a one, it's rounded back to one. So my error will be a minus epsilon. And then in the next step, I add epsilon, but also the error. Yeah. So in the next, next step, I add two epsilons and the sum is correct again. Something also very nice for you to learn, uh, use the debugger to understand what is going on. So we have this example here, yeah? and you can now put a breakpoint here in, in your code, in your Kahan summation, and let the debugger run. So the code will stop in the line where you set the breakpoint. And here on the right-hand side, you see the... Um, variables, yeah? So you can now use this here, step over, and you will step over each instruction and see what's going on. So actually, I'm in the first iteration, i is zero, I take the value, the initial value is one, I calculate the sum, which is one, the error yeah, is zero, and I update my new sum. So then the next value is my epsilon, yeah? So here you see the epsilon, 10 to the minus 16, you add this to the sum and you see the new sum stays one, which means that I have an error. The error is minus the epsilon. So next iteration, the value is the new epsilon, which we have plus the minus epsilon from the error. So minus the minus epsilon from the error. So plus another, another example. So the value is already two epsilon. Now the value is large enough that is that it is consumed by the new sum. So one plus two epsilon is exactly one plus two epsilon and the error is zero again. Okay, and you can step through this and see how he is going. This is this table. Okay, let's finish. I have this as a theorem here. You see that the classical summation algorithm, which we have there, has an error. Yeah. So here is an error that is in multiplied to every xi. Yeah. But if you apply the bound, you can move the bound in front of the sum, and you see the error of the sum is 
epsilon, yes, order of epsilon, but also order n, yeah, order n times epsilon. The error is increasing. For the Kahan summation, you see that our error term here, yeah, which has a bound, and if you move the bound in front of the sum, it's just a two epsilon. So the error of this algorithm is still in the range of two epsilon, so almost exact rounding. I have a proof for the first one. Actually, the proof for the Kahan, I have a reference. But let's have a very short look to the proof for the first one, because, I mean, I like to do proofs when they provide you more insight, more intuition. And let's prove the thing that goes wrong to have a little bit insight of why it is going wrong. Proof is very short. You see it here. So we have to again distinguish between the true mathematical operation. So SI plus XI, yeah, so this plus here is the true mathematical operation. So this is the true result of the plus operation. And then this guy will be rounded. So I have my rounding to the floating point representation of the sum. So this is going on here. And what you have is that this plus operation has a rounding error. And the rounding error is something like, in relative terms, epsilon. So multiply it with one plus epsilon. So I know that the next sum is SI minus one, the previous sum, plus XI, the true solution, multiplied with one plus something, where the something is bounded by epsilon. So multiplied with one plus epsilon. If you now perform the summation, and you recall that all these guys that are inside here, they are sums, yeah? So this is a sum from I or J from zero to I minus one. So this means all elements in this sum are multiplied with this error. So it means that every XI gets this multiplicative factor. Every, every, every previous XI gets this multiplicative factor. So this means that I have here a product of all these multiplicative error terms multiplied to all the previous XIs, to all the previous summits. So XI gets a multiplicative factor in the I's operation, in the I plus one operation, and so on. All these guys get this rounding error from this operation. So now you see that inside here, you have a one plus epsilon, but now I have something like a one plus epsilon to the power of n minus one minus i. Yeah? So I have a power of n minus one minus i um, here. So now you can use this little estimate here that yeah, this is just the first term of the um, expansion, yeah, the linear term of the expansion, that this is a one plus n times epsilon, yeah, n minus one, uh, n minus i times epsilon, actually with a, with a, with a two, yeah, and you get our uh, error estimate. So you see that all these errors accumulate in the sum and we have order in error and maybe you have an intuition why this is happening. So this is our exercise, which we already did. This is the coding session. So you, you find this a little bit nicer written in this class in our repository. And that was it for computer arithmetics. So this here is the reference where you find also the proof for the Kahn summation algorithm. And yeah, I really recommend this uh, reference, the title, what every computer scientist should know about floating point arithmetic. Yeah, so there are a lot of 
nice other things uh, described in this article. That was it for today. Thanks.